Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Today we're going to cover a slightly controversial topic scaleless animals. You're watching Snake Bites. From the first time I saw a scaleless snake, I knew I was going to work with these projects. They're just truly beautiful snakes, but it's kind of surprising that they have a lot of controversy behind them. There's a bunch of people that think that a scaleless animal is an abomination and should never be kept or bred in captivity. Now, hey, I think everyone should have their own opinion, but I want to take a closer look at scaleless animals and how they are different than, say, any other mutation. It was 15 years ago at the All Animal Expo in Chicago, Illinois, that I saw my very first scaleless snake. Now this is a Texas rat, and the truth be told, it was a scaleless northern water snake that I saw. I was completely blown away. It's amazing that when you strip away that scale, it just blows the color and pattern out on the animal. They almost don't even resemble a Texas rat or a water snake or a corn snake or whatever it may be. And let me tell you how it works a little bit. It's actually just a recessive mutation when it comes to snakes. So when you breed a scaleless animal to a normal, you're going to produce all normal looking snakes that are carrying the trait for scaleless. When you raise those up and breed them back, that's how you produce scaleless snakes. Again, they're amazing, but to me, they're just like any other mutation. Let's go ahead and look at some of the pitfalls of scaleless snakes and some of the other pitfalls of other mutations. One of people's complaints about scaleless snakes is the fact that because they're missing scales, one of their really major natural defenses is missing. So when they're going to constrict a mouse, obviously if that mouse bites into them, they don't have that scale as a layer of protection. And I completely agree with that. And as a matter of fact, I only feed frozen thaws to any of my scaleless snakes. I'm not really sure what would happen if a mouse bit it. I would assume it could inflict some damage. But again, in captivity, they don't need to eat live food. So I really don't see this as a major pitfall. But again, isn't any mutation kind of putting an animal in some sort of jeopardy? Let's take a look at a couple other things. What did Brian study in college? A, business management, B, zoology, or C, microbiology? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. Take for instance this normal corn snake. Its biggest defense mechanism is camouflage. As you can see with the color and pattern of this animal, you can certainly see how if it's cruising through a field or a cornfield, it's going to blend into its surrounding and any predators aren't even going to know it's there. Now let's take a look at an albino corn that's bred in captivity, which basically is just stripping a layer of melanin out. That's the black pigment. Now if this was crawling through a field, it's not going to be able to hide too much, right? So if there's a predator out there looking for an easy meal, they're going to just pick that animal off like nothing. And that's one of the main reasons why you don't see a lot of adult specimens in the wild that are albino, because they stick out like a sore thumb. The same thing goes for most other mutations. I guess what I'm trying to say here is I'm not really sure I see a big difference between stripping a layer of melanin or other pigment out or taking away the scales. I know there's a little bit of a difference, but let's face it, these are all animals that are going to live in captivity, so they're never going to be out in the wild where they're going to run into problems. I guess, again, that's just my opinion. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's take a look at some really cool scaleless animals. I've already talked about the Texas rats, which is really the most common of the scaleless snakes. And they're just really beautiful. And again, what I really love about these guys is Texas rats and themselves are a little bit bland. You see a little bit of red coming through, but nothing major. As soon as you strip away that scalation, look at all the red pigment that comes out and just how clean they are. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about scaleless snakes is that they are variable. Some are almost completely scaleless like this animal and some have a ton of scales up to 90% of scales but they all have ventral scales again that's for locomotion it's really important for them to have it there's no way they could move without those ventral scales this is a perfect example of polymorphism within the scale of snakes and these are corn snakes and what I mean by polymorphism is the fact that this animal is almost entirely scaleless and this one probably has 30 to 40 percent scales on its body what's more noticeable is the fact that this animal is way darker than this animal again I see a lot of polymorphism in 
all the scaleless animals, but really a ton in scaleless corn snakes for some reason. Sometimes you'll have them orange, yellow, lots of pattern, a little amount of pattern, sometimes 80 or 90% scales, and sometimes completely scaleless. Now I've been working with scaleless corn snakes for about three or four years, and I'm super excited that we're about to produce our very first paint jobs within the scaleless snakes. I can't imagine what some of these really cool color mutations like diffused in blood red or lavenders are going to look like when you start stripping the scales away. It's going to be a really exciting few years with this project. I want to show you guys some extreme examples or my favorite of the scaleless animals that we've produced. This is actually a scaleless Texas rat and it's just one of the brightest ones we've ever produced with the amount of orange and red in it and just super uber clean. The one thing I've noticed is that it seems like when there's less scales the animals are even more bright. This is another perfect example of this. Look at how beautiful this scaleless corn snake is. Again it's just really bright orange and just beautiful animal. Again might have 10% scales at the very most and then this animal came out last year and I just loved it because it's still super bright with very few scales but what's interesting is look at this back pattern it's actually just got little dots down it doesn't have the saddles at all and again this isn't a mutation like a motley or anything this is just a normal corn snake that came out scaleless and then we produced a really kind of creepy looking animal in my opinion and that's a scaleless leucistic texas rat so again the leucistic makes it pure white and the scaleless takes its scales away but for whatever reason with the scaleless leucistics they get all wrinkly looking and they're kind of goofy but uh i tell you what i'm still loving this little monkey I get asked all the time if there's anything special you need to do as far as care for scaleless snakes. And the truth is no, they shed 100% fine, they're 100% perfect to care for, other than the fact that we don't feed them live food. Now when it comes to bearded dragons, it's a little bit different story. Now this is a hypotranslucent silky, which is basically a super form of a leatherback and it doesn't have any scales at all but unfortunately with these bearded dragons it does require a little extra care they have a lot of problems with shedding for some reason without having those scales and they do stress out a little easier so we keep them in smaller groups and we give them a little extra attention let me tell you what I do with them I make sure that I'm soaking them at least every couple days just for about a half an hour or so it loosens that skin up and more importantly we actually rub something called bag balm on them now this is stuff that farmers used for the udders of animals and it really just softens the skin a lot because what happens is if they don't shed out they can lose the tip of their tail or even a toe or two so you got to make sure you've got to really care for them so there's a little disadvantage to keeping the silkies but if you keep them that way and you give that little extra effort my gosh are they beautiful animals just wait till this thing's about this big it's just going to be insanely looking now I tell you what guys I know I'm probably not converting people that hate scaleless animals but I really want to make sure you understand that if scaleless animals are in captivity and cared for properly they're really amazing animals and something that you shouldn't look past as some sort of abomination yeah you have a snake problem what like in your garden okay you, clove oil I don't I, I'll be honest with you, we've tried a lot of things and, and we haven't been able to find any repellents, but I'm not going to lie to you, we've never tried clove oil before. So, um, I mean, I tell you what, why don't, uh, I happen to have this guy that works here that we always use as our kind of test dummy. So why don't you let me grab some clove oil, I think it's something I can get at a local store, and I will have him test out if it's a repellent on snakes and I'll call you back, okay? Okay. So I just ran around to five different stores to try to find clove oil. I'm really interested to see if this stuff will repel snakes. I can tell you one thing, it's got a really strong odor. And again, it's 100% natural, so I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but we've just failed on everything to repel snakes. I have a feeling that this is going to be a fail too, but let's go get Chewy on the case. Okay, in true hen dog fashion, one of you suggested go get clove butt at the store and have Chewy try it out. Well, he got it. I don't know what it is. I think it's cologne, so we'll try. I do know one thing. It stinks. So, say I'm getting ready for a date. The hot chick. Mm -hmm. I like to rub it on my beard, because when she starts kissing me, whew. So let's pretend this is the hot chick. And I'm like, hey, baby. Ow! 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 <laughs> Not my 
man, stupid. <laughs> I'll release your mandibles. Well, go in your cage, go in your cage, go in your cage. Squirm away, go. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Here, look at your bed. Ow! <laughs> Come on! Oh! Oh my you ass! I just got that stupid sucker, you striped pain in the ass! Ow! <laughs> Don't do that! You make it worse! Okay, I got this new clone. It's called Clove Leaf. Have a smell. Oh! <laughs> You're stupid idiot! Wrong! <laughs> what are you doing? Hold on. You're good. You're good. Uh, oh, get away. Get away. That, that's the last time we ever do a shoot together. Oh, it feels like little needles going in oh, your yeah, skin. Obviously, in true Chewy fashion, I clustered up the whole project, lost a sucker, smell like dumb bleeding all over the place, and I will never do a shoot with that stupid snake again. Period. Okay, it's summertime, guys, and there are a lot of festivals and concerts and a lot of really cool bands performing. Now, I really want to go to Uproar Tour because I'm dying to see Shinedown live. I want to know what kind of concerts are you guys going to? What kind of shows do you wish you could go to? Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and maybe have a little bit better understanding of how scaleless animals work. Personally, I think they're amazing animals. If you guys want to follow what's going on here day to day, make sure to hit us up over on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV. Until next time, you've been watching Snake Bites. So what did Brian study in college? If you guessed C, microbiology, you are absolutely right. But the other ones are reasonable guesses, so don't flip out if you got it wrong or anything. <laughs>